Yay for reunions and all, but what about all the creepy crawly monster slaying action? Either that'll happen off screen, which is f***ing unforgivable, or the Mind Flayer literally sent one minion when it found out Will's location. Is that? No, it's that other superpower child they told you about. The hell is this? Where you been? Hopper said, Hey Eleven, I'm so happy to see you and thank you for saving us from the bullet resistant face sucker I was about to start shooting in vain, strangely. Teeth. Come on, Eleven, that's nasty. Your impeccable hair suggests that you haven't showered since Chicago, and even worse, you were just on a bus. <laughs> Stop making that noise. It's unacceptable decorum in front of any human being, Dustin. You sound like Lumpawaru going through puberty. Have fun going down that rabbit hole, Internet. Is this the longest Eleven has left her nose bloody? Because it feels like it is. Do you think if, if we got you back there that, that you could close it? Strip away the techno music and the fact that we're watching a TV show, and it's really weird that Eleven is basically ignoring Joyce and randomly staring off into the middle distance. If you're ringing my doorbell this many times, you'd better be holding a hot as hell pizza and there better not be pineapple on it. I am looking for my little sister, Max. Their driveway is pretty dark this time of night. Sure, he's hot, but imagine giving your kid's location to a bare-chested man-child who just knocked on your door in the middle of the evening with barely a minute of hesitation. The power of boners is strong, but I know for a fact the power of a mama bear's protective instinct is a little bit stronger. Also, we interrupt your sci-fi psychic monster show to bring you the start of a really weird narrative thread that involves adulterous intentions and an emotionally and physically neglected housewife clearly dreaming about having relations with a minor. That's right, Billy's only 17 when he first arrives in Hawkins. This is bordering on some taboo fanfic bullshit, and I am not here for it. I said, uh, demodogs. Like Demogorgon and dogs, like you put them together, it sounds pretty badass. How is this important right now? Because Dustin is the adorable comedic glue that holds the ship together, Hopper. Feel free to take on that mantle yourself in season three and see how it works out for you. We need to make the host uninhabitable. We need to burn it out of him. To be clear, the host we're talking about making uninhabitable is a 14 year old. I don't remember seeing minor minor torture in the Netflix trigger warnings for this episode. Take Denfield, you can see a large oak tree. You're gonna swing a right, that road is gonna dead end. That's about a five minute walk from there. The fate of the world is on the line and you're expecting me to remember fairly vague directions with minimal measures of distance from memory? At the very least, you're writing that sh down for me. Turns out I'm actually a pretty damn good babysitter. This one line becomes Steve's entire narrative arc over the next two seasons, and I'm here for it. The only sin here is Steve never gets paid for babysitting after season two. Well, come on, let's go. Time. These kids are 12 and 13. Maybe Hop's right, and we don't need to see them kissing yet. I'm not sitting on you, kid. I should have been there. Why? So you could yell at her, break stuff, and trigger another understandable PTSD meltdown in your adopted daughter? Sometimes I feel like I'm, like I'm just some kind of black hole or something. Hopper did a great job of skipping some emotional sh earlier between Eleven and Mike, but sadly he skipped us right into his own skippable conversation. This is why I have trust issues. Sarah's my girl. Where is she? She left us. The black hole. I got her. Okay, Hopper, glad you're opening up, but you must be confusing the sh out of poor Eleven here. Your daughter died of cancer, which you just described as a black hole. Problem is, you just described yourself as a black hole, which makes it sound like either you also have cancer or you killed your daughter. Overlay onto that the idea that Eleven has literally seen paranormal wormholes transport her to the underworld. She may think you're talking about an actual black hole. Use your metaphors with care, dude. We can't just bury it like some common mammal, okay? It's not a dog. Are there different funeral procedures for uncommon mammals? Does Dustin have different end-of-life rules for reptiles and amphibians after death? The show raises an issue I didn't expect to need answered, but I do. I need answers, Dustin. So if we get their attention, maybe we can draw them away from the lab and clear a path to the gate. And if you'd taken a few minutes to think about this earlier, you could have come up with this plan while the people it affects the most were still here, so you didn't have to leave this whole damn thing to chance in lazy, convenient writing. And who is that? Did he see us? Kids. We once again interrupt your sci-fi psychic monster show to bring you two numbskulls fist fighting in the kitchen. We're 20 minutes in and there haven't been any monsters or psychic action yet. Did Stranger Things forget how to, you know, Stranger Things? Look, I understand you gotta save Steve, but you do not know how much of what drug is in that needle. They were using doses big enough to knock out an otherworldly entity possessing Will. Why does this show continue to underestimate how dangerous the concentrated sleep juice is? Also, Lucille was right there. The Great Equalizer. Sure, there's a solid chance of tetanus, but that sure beats inducing an accidental coma. It's actually kinda nice. Nice? 
nice or landlord renting this hole for two thousand dollars a month is more financial equity firms snatch up real estate from lower and middle class home buyers nice take that broken american housing market i mean uh stranger things this thing has had well long enough Let's kill the son of a bitch. Assuming the gender and questionable parentage of a devil lizard in seven words or less. You let me do the heavy lifting up front, all right? You save your strength till we're below. Solid plan, Hop. Except you appear to be suffering from short-term memory loss, given that the violently accelerated metal proved to be less than effective against the pus pups from purgatory mere hours ago. You're okay. He is not. Yeah! Let me go! Let me go! Yeah! The heaters weren't at max already? As a mom, Joyce should really know that only partially cooking your mind flayer possessed child can lead to nasty food poisoning. It's definitely that or rice. The bottom line is a party member requires assistance and it is our duty to provide that assistance. Listen, Dustin, your sage D&D advice is very in character, but it's hard to swallow after neither you, Mike, or Lucas seem to object or see the inherent flaw in splitting the party three ways. Hey, dog. Those suckers got you pretty good, huh? No hop, they got Bob pretty good. This is barely an aperitif by comparison. Did they not like how he tasted? Were they full up on Bob? How does he survive this? Maybe you could help her lead like a normal life. What skills has Dr. Owens demonstrated to lead you to believe he's capable of setting up fake identities for people? He's a doctor in a secret government lab, not a black market passport maker. Don't go anywhere. Here, have this gun that is much less powerful than other guns that we've seen have no effect on the gore geckos. Also, I know we're not on the best of terms with Dr. Owens yet, but if this was Joyce, would Hopper have left her in the stairwell? Hell no! Instead, Hopper's here just quipping away like leaving him here shouldn't be a f***ing death sentence. I'm okay. Nice. Really nice. Jesus, what an idiot. Listen here, you pubescent plebes. He wasn't f***ing faking. Just because he's okay now doesn't mean he didn't have the right to scream at the sudden sh shower he just endured. Shouting mom instead of stopping your mom from being choked. Light her up. I'm in such deep sh Team, kids light the fire just in the nick of time to save Hopper from a fate worse than Bob. Think about it. They had to come up with this plan, fight off Billy, drive to the right place, navigate the tunnels to find the hub, spray it down, pause dramatically for Steve's one-liner, light it up, and with no way to communicate what they're doing to Hopper, they get that sh down to the second. Oh, my. oh God. Phew, glad Will survived the torment of being possessed. Now he can live through the torment of being gay in the 80s. Closing the gate is a big deal and all, but we're not going to get to see Eleven fight a single Raptor Reaper? The Mind Flayer has poor resource allocation skills and we're paying the price. This is too much hand-holding for one episode. Start. Oh, f*** off. You did not just bump into the one spooky salamander that you happened to rear from birth because you just didn't, okay? Get up, buddy. The age-old nature versus nurture discussion was actually solved in 1983 by an annoying kid, some nougat, and lazy writing. <laughs> Who knew? I wanted to find something from your past, something that angers you. Ah! Sudden Chicago episode callback. Dustin! Come on! Why did they stop climbing? I mean, sure, it's a long shot, but it's not a bat versus a bunch of toothy lament lizards long shot. Wow, the quasi-dimensional quadrupeds multiplied faster than the Dothraki between the Battle of Winterfell and the Battle of King's Landing, and I watch too much Game of Thrones. Seriously, like one, maybe two of these dogs is all it would take. But no, the Mind Flayer is calling everyone back. I'm not rooting for the bad guy. I'm just rooting for efficiency. Oh, now the guns work on the satanic slither skinks? Now they work? What good is that to Bob? Elle screams while holding up her hand cliche. Using two hands just gets you double sins. Fortunately, the cataclysm critters work just like the bad guys from the first Avengers movie and all die at the same time as soon as the gate is closed and the hero passes out. Is the next stop shawarma? I'd actually love the next stop to be shawarma. Littering. Sealing the fallout zone of an interdimensional hell rift with some chain padlocks and a notice. Do you want seven seasons of Buffy the Vampire Slayer? I mean, of course you do, but these guys shouldn't. Since the release of the incendiary tape, the once quiet town of Hawkins, Indiana has spent time in a place it never expected, the national spotlight. Even the Duffer Brothers can't last an entire season without a news position. Are there no writers who can create an entire season without relying on a TV reporter in the background to deliver expositional information? No? Just reservation dogs? This Jeep merging into the flow of vehicles was so smooth it was orgasmically distracting and don't you act like you weren't thinking the same thing. 
Pretty sure my football career is over. Come on, Paul Reiser. Stranger Things didn't end your football career. Starring in Concussion with Will Smith did. They had a whole year and they forgot to add school to this banner. Or even worse, they decided that Hawkins Middle was good enough. But not as much as I love you, Lukey. Get out of my room! Your ability to slam that door without putting Erica's orthodontic journey back several years proves she is not, in fact, in your room. Ow, ow, that hurts. It's gonna be worth it. Promise. Sure, you could control how your daughter looks going to her first school dance, or, hear me out, you let Max make her own decisions about her appearance. Unless you're just conditioning her for a world where women don't get any say in their bodily autonomy. <laughs> and you're gonna slam dad. Like a lion. <laughs> Uh, don't do that, okay? Yeah, much better to wait until you've been dating a while, get married, have a few kids, and then let them know who you really are. Best to hide all your quirks until they're forced to stay with you out of sheer obligation. What's in this? Pure fuel. Punch Max. Hey, zombie boy. Do you want to dance? I know kids are mean, and yes, this is mean, but none of the people who tormented me through childhood ever asked me to dance. So I'm saying this for being unrealistic and definitely not out of jealousy. Show makes me sit through a full minute of Dustin being rejected on the dance floor, wrapped in what was already a sufficiently torturous eight minutes of high school dance flooring. Ending that sophomore slump strong, aren't we, Stranger Things? Hey. Wanna dance? Pity dances. Come on, let's go. But who will be in the punch bowl? It's the 80s. Someone's totally gonna spike it. Probably a teacher. It's worth every breath I take to remind you at every opportunity that the police song currently playing is not a love song. And if you are of a differing opinion, please don't stand so close to me. Aw, they got a dance. That's cute. They'll each get an adorable little memory to accompany all that physical and emotional trauma from being attacked by interdimensional monsters. You know, we often see buildings in the Upside Down that have a counterpart in our world, but my main curiosity is when did the buildings in the Upside Down get built? This season was set in 1984, so if you build a house in 1985 in Hawkins, would it automatically get a parallel version of itself in the Upside Down? Or was there a cutoff for these things to appear? Like, nothing after 1980 gets to exist in the Upside Down? These are the answers we need in Season 5, people. You got renewed for a third season. We get it. All right, now let me tell you something. I'm a bad father. Do you know what the definition of insanity is? No, do you? Yes, it's the inability to relate to another human being. Now wipe yourself off, you're bleeding. I'm Nancy's mother. But you're, uh, you're so, uh, you're so thin. We can't just bury it like some common mammal, okay? It's not a dog. You're not cheddar. This is some common bitch. Well, that's one point of view. From a certain point of view. I am gonna beat the holy f**k, f**king, f**kity, f out of one of you. Expecto Patronum! You held on to it as long as you could, didn't you?